Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pierre-François Guglielmi. I'm the technical manager of Partner Solutions at Rubrik. And today I'm not going to tell you much about Rubrik, but I wanted to tell you about Active Directory Recovery, because actually I think Active Directory is almost everywhere. It's a kind of critical infrastructure service that many applications and workloads rely on. And it can be protected quite well, I think. But the real challenge is when you have a, a domain control failure, right? Or an entire domain failure, or when you want to do a disaster recovery, inc including your Active Directory. Uh, recovering Active Directory in that case, or in these cases, can be challenging if you don't know exactly what to do. And the goal is, to, is for you to recover your domain controllers the right way so that they are working properly after recovery, right? So um, this is the agenda. So we're, we're do a quick introduction about the methods of uh, recovery for Active Directory domain controllers, a few, a few prerequisites or requirements. Uh, there are a few very important things to keep in mind when you want to make sure that you will recover your Active Directory domain controller right. Of course, you will have to, to have a good backup, and we'll see what, that's, what this means exactly. And, and of course, we'll see what to do precisely when there is a domain controller that crashes. So in terms of introdu introduction, um, I would like to tell you about the different approaches. So basically, there are two ways of thinking around uh, Active Directory recovery. There is, let's say, the, the old way. And don't get me wrong, the old way is totally fine and it's good. And the old way is just that when you have a domain, a single domain controller that fails, well, you just reinstall a new Windows server, you promote it running DC promo, and you're good from an Active Directory perspective. That's a good method, right? But the problem is when your domain controllers host anything else but that role, I don't know, it may host files, it can be a filer, it can be, it can, it can host another application, it can be, I don't know, a backup server, I've seen that. It shouldn't be, but that exists, right? So what do you do when you have something else? You'll probably have to recover that server. So there's the modern approach in that case, and the, the modern approach would be to recover the domain control. But again, we need to make sure that we do that the right way. So a few prerequisites, that's really for Active Directory to work properly, because actually if you want to be sure that you can back that up properly, and that when recovering, everything will work as expected. You have to make sure that your Active Directory, Active Directory works uh, as it should. So the first thing is time synchronization. That's key. It really has to be functioning properly for, it, for all the rest to work. So basically, the idea is that you know, in, in Active Directory, you have what are, are called the FSMOs, so flexible single master operator operations. And one of these roles is the PDC emulator, which is kind of a legacy of uh, the old days of NT, Windows NT, right? Uh, where we had primary domain controllers and secondary. Here we have a PDC emulator, and this one is the one that is responsible for time sync. It's actually the reference for the rest, the rest of the domain. Um, so this one should be actually synced with an external time source using NTP, preferably. And the rest of the, of the domain, especially the other domain controllers, should sync with that PDC emulator using a Windows protocol. Right? If this is working well, you have a good basis. Right? The other thing that is really important is name resolution, especially DNS for Active Directory. Um, that is actually true for a lot of different things. It's true for virtualization as well. If you're working with vSphere, you probably know that name resolution is quite important as well. Um, so that is true also for Active Directory to work properly. If you're using this, maybe you should try to also use Windows DNS. And in that case, use Active Directory in integrated zones. That would be the best case scenario. And make sure that your domain controllers are properly configured in terms of client. The DNS client has to be configured with itself first, and then with the other domain controllers, and maybe with an external source. Now, have a good backup if you want to make sure that you will recover your domain controllers properly. What is a good backup for Active Directory? Well, it is an application consistent backup. How do you achieve this? Well, the good news here 
is that Microsoft is providing a pretty good framework, which is the VSS framework for volume shadow copy service, right? And with this, they provide different so-called writers for the applications that do integrate with that and that do support that for making sure that during a backup, an application consistent backup, the writer, the application writer will do what is necessary so that the application is frozen and no IOs or transactions are lost and you do not lose data, right? And so when you run actually a DC promo on the, on the Windows server, which is the tool to promote a Windows server to the main controller, um, the, the Active Directory, which name is NTDS VSS Writer, is installed and configured automatically. And Microsoft says explicitly that when you back up uh, an Active Directory in the main controller, you should make sure that it works with that, that it, that it is able to trigger the NTDS Writer. If you want Microsoft to support the backup and potentially the recovery, you need to make sure that your data protection software is able to do that and to trigger that writer, right? In terms of rubric, we support that since version 4.2.1. So it's totally fine with rubric. And there are different ways of backing up domain controllers. It can be done with, you know, the Windows native tools, for example, or some very application level solutions. It's probably not the best idea because actually the recovery process will be more complicated. If you can, trying to choose an image level backup, especially if it's a virtual machine, but you can also do image level backup for physical machines with some solutions on the market, or volume level backup, but not application level. You'll see that for the recovery process, it's gonna be much easier. So verify when you back up domain controllers, verify that the VSS operations are done um, as expected. Right, so if you could check, check the, the Windows event log to do that. Uh, and actually there's this event ID 1917 that will actually notify you that uh, a shadow copy has been taken successfully for Active Directory. You can also check that of course in your data protection software. This is a screenshot of the notification in rubric, but check your data protection software to see something similar to this, right? So we have a good backup. A DC fails. So there are different scenarios here. So let's start with l probably the, the easiest one when you just when you have just one DC that fails, right? And not the entire directory of forest. Uh, in that case, th these are the general steps, and then we're going to drill down and see a little more details. So um, the first step is, of course, to do the recovery of the machine or the system volume depending on whether you do image level backup or volume level backup. Then you disconnect the server from the network. That step is quite important. Restart the Windows server in DSRM for directory services repair mo mode. Then you will have to actually do a recovery of sysvol. That's the important piece here. And this is what you must not screw up. Um, and actually, in the case of a single DC failure, this uh, recovery will need to be non-authoritative. I will get back to that. And then recover uh, the server to the network and restart. So in the case of the Sys SysVault recovery, there are actually two different ways. Because actually, there are two different technologies to replicate SysVault between domain controllers. So there's the old way, NTFRS, there's the new way, which is DFSR. But anyways, when you are running in, in DSRM, you just open up the registry editor, go to that key here, parameters, NTFRS parameters, backup restore, process startup. And you will actually create that D word if it does not exist. Burr flags, if it, does, if it does exist, just change the value to D2. You save that, close, restart in normal mode, reconnect the server to the network, and you're pretty much done. And you won't have anything such as USN rollbacks or things like that, okay? If using DFSR, the registry key is different. It's actually in DFSR restore, and you will have to create the key sysvol if it does not exist, and set it to non-authoritative. 
reconnect the server to the network, restart, done. Now, if you have to recover an entire Active Directory domain, the steps are pretty much the same, except that the first one for the first DC, which will probably be the PDC emulator in most cases, you will have to do uh, a Sysvol recovery, which will be authoritative. And you will have to turn off that initial synchronization if you have other FSM, F SMOs, sorry for the typo, uh, hosted on the same server. If not, if it's just a PDC emulator, you don't have to disable this. And so to do an authoritative restore of Sysvol with NTFSR, it's still the same key as previously, but the value is different. So you position the bird flags to D4, reconnect the server to the network, restart in, in the normal mode. For DFSR, still Sysvol, set it to authoritative, reconnect to the network, restart. Once the first domain controller is fully recovered, you can do the non-authoritative restores of the other ones. OK? That's how it's going to work. As a conclusion, uh, to recover your domain controllers, you have options. You can absolutely create a new server and do a DC promo unless you have anything else hosted on the same server. In that case, you can restore your DCs, but make sure you have, uh, you have data protection solutions that do trigger the NTDS writer, um, and that can do either image level backup or um, volume level backup. If you need to, to, to know more and you need more details, I wrote a white paper, and you can get, get that white paper by clicking this link. Thank you very much.